You know, one thing I learned, you should never ever take life for granted. You should never ever take time for granted. Every time that you wake up, you should appreciate that day that you woke up. I always try to show my children a father's love. You never know. Your next birthday might be your last. That's what happened to me. Honestly, even though my birthday party was not really much, I am grateful to be here just to have another birthday party. Three months prior before that, I had to have heart surgery. My doctor discovered that I had real bad arrhythmia and fibrillation, which can end up with me having a heart attack, so I had to take medication. But then he said, later on in the future, most likely I'm going to have to have surgery. Now ask yourself a question. Do you really want to take that risk? So I got the surgery. I had about six months to prepare for it. A normal heart beats about 60 to 100 times per minute. In a normal heartbeat, the heart's electrical signals follow a specific pathway through the heart. The signal begins in the sinoatrial node, or SA node, located in the right atria. The SA node triggers the atria to contract, pushing blood into the ventricles. The electrical signals then travel through the atrioventricular node or the AV node and into the ventricles. The signal now causes the ventricles to contract, pumping the blood into the lungs and the body. Sometimes a problem with the conduction system causes the heart to beat too fast, too slow, or to have an erratic or irregular beat. During my ablation procedure, a catheter is inserted into the vein of the leg and is guided through the vein into the heart. Once the catheter has reached the target site of the heart, electrodes at the tip of the catheter emit radio energy. This energy will heat and destroy the heart tissue, causing the abnormal rhythm. In most cases, the heart returns to a normal rhythm following ablation. In normal cases, the surgery should take about one to three hours to complete. 20 minutes from now, I'll be, I'll be prepping, they'll, they'll be prepping me for surgery and um, I want to say wish me luck. I'm waiting, preparing for a heart surgery. I'm about to get in about an hour from now. Wish me luck. Be here for you. I love you. I love you too. Hello, Richard. Richard. Yo, what's up, brother Rich? Birthday, Richard. No matter which way I lay, I can feel my body squeezing onto my heart. It hurts.
clear the air. Um, I had a 10 hour surgery for heart fibrillation and the surgery went well. So I'm in the process of uh, recovering. Right now I, um, I have chest pains. It feels like R2D2 is laying on my chest right now. And that's because of the inflammation of the heart, meaning that after they poked and heat little marks in the muscle of the heart, um, eventually the heart is going to swell up from the location. And the heart fills, fits in a socket like where the lungs are. So whenever I take a deep breath, my heart can feel that. And that's causing friction. So sometimes I'm short of breath. And if I lay down or if I lay the wrong way, it's, it hurts. So it's going to be about two or three days of going through that pain. But I just feel grateful that I'm here. You know, fibrillation might sound like a not so minor thing. So if you let the fibrillation get too bad, um, it can cause heart attack. So at my age, I can't take no chances. You know, I'm grateful that I'm here and I'm grateful for each day that I have that I can wake up in the morning and be with, you know, my family that I love and friends that, you know, support me and for you guys to support me. So that's why I'm doing this video. Let's now talk about the hospitals in Japan. The Fukuoka University Hospital is located in the Jonaku Ward area next to Fukudaimai Station. The Fukuoka University Hospital covers a large area. Fukuoka University Hospital is one portion of that area. As a major hospital, it's providing the cutting edge of special medicine throughout Japan. They provide their patients with medical services with the highest quality of care. Their highly skilled surgeons provide advanced medical services using the latest techniques in healthcare medicine. This is the main reason why I chose to have my surgery here. One of the good things about Japan is the medical insurance and the great hospitals. I don't think I would have recovered as quickly as I did if I was back home in the U.S. One of the things you don't want to try in Japan is to get your blood pressure done with a standard, with a standard blood pressure machine because it's, cal it's calibrated for Japanese size. So, if I put my hand in here, now know why I have a big arm, okay, so, the readout says I have very high blood pressure, which is inaccurate because it's calibrated for a Japanese machine. Now I'm going to get it manually done by a doctor to show you the difference in the blood pressure machine when you use a standard blood pressure in Japan. Now, this is a large pad, yes? A large one? Is this big size or regular size? Regular size? <laughs> Japanese size. Japanese size, okay. Okay. Forty-four ninety. Okay. Mm -hmm. One forty-four ninety. 
and this one says 164. 87. <laughs> big, big difference. Big difference. Yeah. Now, another thing about Japan is the wheelchairs. A standard wheelchair is quite small. So, this is a standard size wheelchair. So, if I get in this wheelchair. Oh, 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 as you can see. <laughs> If I get in this wheelchair, I can't get out of it. It's too small. So if I try to stand up in this wheelchair, I think I'll break it. <sighs> oh my God. <sighs> Lenny? <laughs> I'm talking about wheelchairs are really small. She's like. She's like. Well, that was quite funny. Um, when I got in the wheelchair, one of the staff came to run and help me because she thought I was in trouble. <laughs> okay, well, I'm all finished with my checkup at the Fukuoka University Hospital. Uh, the doctor said that um, my fibrillation is gone and the next time I have to visit is maybe uh, in February, matter of fact, February 13th. It's a checkup, one more checkup then. But he gave me a clean bill of health and I guess I can start working out again. So that's a good thing.